Secretary Esper, it's great to have you here. Welcome. Hi, Sarah. Good afternoon. Good to be with you. So, as I said, oil is surging again. Stocks have been seeing some wild swings. One question I think investors are grappling with here is what is the end game? What do you think? Yeah. Well, let me start from the big picture to say that the post-Cold War era in Europe is officially over, which means that the paradigm uh, of security in Europe has shifted, meaning all or nearly all European countries now recognize Vladimir Putin for the ruthless autocrat that he is. And so you see, you know, the basic approach led by Germany, uh, uh, change has changed, and for good and for the, for the long term. And I applaud the Germans for taking a new approach. That change in security will drive economic change as well. And so I think we will see this ripple across all the markets. Uh, I've been a big proponent for imposing all type of economic and financial uh, sanction as quickly as possible, particularly on Putin and the oligarchs. And frankly, I think I thought we should have implemented oil sanctions, uh, gas sanctions last week. Uh, it's just that severe. And what we see now is frustrated by their lack of progress. The Russians are going to uh, begin with their same old tactics of indiscriminate bombing and shelling and airstrikes of large population centers. President Biden did signal that he's open to restrictions on energy imports and, and sanctions on, on Putin's energy. Is there a breaking point? The rubles and collapse, they haven't been able to open their stock market. They're getting cut off from the entire financial system. Is there a breaking point for Putin economically that changes the direction of where this goes? Well, we don't know, which is why we should throw everything at him right now, because every day that we hesitate, more Ukrainians die and more Ukrainian territories occupied, despite the fact that they're putting up a, 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 a incredible resistance effort and they should be applauded. It's inspiring. So I don't know why we don't throw every sanction we can at them. Look, I understand it could drive up uh, prices here for gas in, in the United States and elsewhere. It has an inflationary impact. But look, I think the American people uh, understand what's happening in Russia. The international order is at stake, democracy is at stake, and certainly Ukraine. I think American people are willing to pay a little bit more at the gas pump this summer if it means uh, ending this conflict and, uh, and safeguarding Ukraine's sovereignty. Secretary Esper, where, what's your perception of uh, what it would be acceptable here if there were some kind of prolonged standoff, uh, if we do get some kind of negotiated uh, ceasefire? What are the, the Western nations willing to uh, essentially grant uh, in this case? I mean, is it going to have to be a unilateral withdrawal? We're look, trying to look at, at how we reach some kind of equilibrium, as imperfect as it might be. Well, look, we should take our lead from President Zelensky and the, and the Ukrainian people. It's, it's not our position to say what that uh, compromise should look like. I frankly think that it should be a return to the status quo ante prior to 2014 when they invaded Crimea. I think the Russians should depart all of Ukraine to include Crimea and reestablish all, all the borders. And uh, that's where I would begin. Uh, otherwise, we should take our cue from, uh, from uh, Mr. Zelensky and support him every which way we can. Arms, ammunition, economic sanctions, financial sanctions, shutting down air traffic, everything that we can think of, because there, there just is that possibility that the Russian people will, will, will be upset enough when we've seen, what, 7,000 or so arrested, or maybe the oligarchs or maybe even the military will turn on Putin and oust him from office. That would be a good thing. Do you see any sort of hope for diplomatic resolution here? We, we're constantly monitoring. The Ukrainians say there's hope for talk still. Do you think there's any, any faith to put into that? Look, I think you always have to keep the door for diplomacy open. It's good to talk, but I think Putin has committed to the fight. He's in the fight. He's going to do everything he can right now to uh, seize these key cities. He, uh, in, in my view, it's already been a strategic failure. I said that before he actually launched across the border. In my view, he did three things that he said he didn't want to do, which is uh, better unify NATO, put more NATO troops on his borders, and push the Ukrainian people more towards the arms of the West. There's no doubt at this point that that's even, that's even worse. So I think he's already facing a strategic failure. My sense is, given his past practices, he'll drive on and try and seize those cities. But it's going to be a bloody affair. He may take them, but he won't hold them. And uh, he, his soldiers may never get out of those cities. So I think we're in this for the long haul. 